We are busy looking at volumes of solids of revolution. We've looked at finding volumes with slicing, and then we found a formula to find the volume of a solid of revolution if a function is rotated about the x-axis. So we're going to take this one step further now. This is the formula we got for rotating a continuous non-negative function about the x-axis. So let's look at this next question and see how we're going to approach this one. The region bounded by y equal to x and y equal to x squared. Now I've got two functions as at play. That region is revolved around the x-axis. Find the volume of the solid. So what we've got now, we've got y equal to x and we've got y equal to x squared. Now we know they intersect at 0 and 1, and thankfully that's the area we're looking for. So we're looking at this shape now. We want to take this shape and rotate it around the x-axis and find the volume of that solid. Now that solid will have a hole in it. It's not the same as if I just take the line y equal to x and I rotate it. I will not get the same shape. I'll have to take something away from it. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to take the shape of the outside function, if I rotate that, and take away from it the inside function. Now we've seen a similar idea when we looked at areas between curves. So I'm going to go straight into what we're going to do. To find the area of that slice is going to be pi times the radius square. But the radius, in this case, if I look at my slice, it's going to be a disk where I've got a bigger radius and a smaller radius. My outside radius is my outside, my upper function, which is y equal to x in this case. But to find this area, it'll be pi times the big radius, let's call it r for now, and s. r s pi r squared minus pi s squared. So to find the area of this disk, of this slice, that's what we're going to use. So we can look at it as pi of r squared minus s squared. Now in this case, r is my outside, which, which is y equal to x, and s is this inside function, which is y, y equal to x squared. Now it's important that you sketch your graph so you can see where it's lying. But we're going to do the same thing that what we've been doing. The volume is the integral from 0 to 1 of the area of that slice. So it's that area is pi times. Now my function it's x, but I square it, minus the x squared that I square, dx. So that's the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times x squared minus x to the power of 4, dx. So that's pi times a third x cubed minus a fifth x to the power of 5 between 1 and 0. And that is nice to substitute. We like when there's a 0 there, when I substitute 1 in. I've got a third minus a fifth, and that all minus zero, so that gives me 2 pi over 15. So that's how we're going to find this area if I've got a disk, if I've got a washer, I mean, rather than a disk. So there's a hole in my disk there. So just to formalize what we did here, I'll get back to that example. To formalize it, that's what the formula is going to look like. So very similar to what we looked at when we had areas between two curves, we're looking at using this formula. So similarly, if we want to do it around the y-axis, the formula doesn't change. Everything is just with, is with respect to y. So we're going to focus on the x-axis and do examples linked to the x-axis. So let's look at this next one. Draw the region bounded by the curves y equal to x plus 1 y equal to 2x, x equal to 0, and x equal to 1. All right, there's a lot of information there, so we've got to figure out what we're busy doing here. We need to sketch this to see where we are working. So when I sketch it, y equal to 2x goes over there. y equal to x plus 1 cuts the y-axis at 1, the x-axis at minus 1. So it'll go this way. All right, so they have got 1, minus 1, 0. So let's hope they cross where we want them to cross. If x is equal to 1, they're both equal to 2. So yes, this is where they cross. 
So this is the area we're looking at. Now take note, if we chose an x value, for example, 2, 3, or 4, something further on, it would have been two separate calculations if we had another part that we're rotating. So just to get the concept across, we're not going to complicate things. So that's the shape that I'm rotating about the x-axis. So my volume is the integral from 0 to 1 of pi times the upper function. So we must make sure we know which one is which. This is y equal to x plus 1, and this is y equal to 2x. So it's always important to sketch it, to firstly see are they cr crossing there, there's nothing strange happening, and which one's on top. So this is going to be for my washer, that's going to be the bigger radius. So it's x plus 1 squared minus the inside one, which is 2x, 2x squared dx. So now it takes a little bit of algebraic manipulation, multiplying out, adding like terms. So I've got x squared minus 4x squared, so it's minus 3x squared plus 1. The middle term here is 2x plus 1. There we go. Now I can integrate, I can take pi out, and I've got minus x cubed plus x squared plus x, everything between 1 and 0, and that gives me pi times minus 1 plus 1 plus 1 is just 1, so that gives me pi units cubed, whatever the units is that I'm working with. So that's how we're going to find volumes of solids of revolution. Whether my cross section is a solid disk or whether it's a washer, we've looked at how to deal with both of them. The next video, the next application we're going to look at is finding arc lengths of curves.